Good morning and Jai Chandra. I welcome you all in today's live class of biology. Children, as we are discussing the exercise of chapter nutrition in animals, and I have explained you the first exercise of the chapter that is choose the most appropriate answer, and we are discussing the second exercise that is short, very short answer question, and I have explained the four questions. in previous class so come to the next that very short answer question question number 5 and the question is saliva helps by making the food wet it does not have any other function true or false so children remember the function of saliva it makes the food wet it is one of the function but it is not only function it also help to break the starch into sugar so we can say that the statement is false now the question number 6 where does initial digestion of proteins takes place Till it is read again. Initial digestion of protein, not the final digestion. So the initial digestion of proteins takes place in stomach, and the final complete digestion of proteins takes place in small intestine. So here your answer will be stomach. Yes. Now the question number seven: the white hard substance that covers teeth is called. Above our teeth, we have a white hard substance. It is the hardest substance, and the name of this substance is enamel. So, children, you have to write here the answer: enamel. Question number eight: In which part of the digestive system is water absorbed from undigested food? So, children, please pay your attention. Water is absorbed in which part? nutrients get absorbed in small intestine after that the food passes to the large intestine and here in large intestine the water the excess water which is present in the food gets absorbed so your answer will be large intestine now the question number 9 the semi digested food that is chewed again by rumination is called the name of that food Which again get chewed by the ruminants, like cows. So, what is the term used for that kind of food? It's curd. Okay, children. So, your answer will be curd is the partially digested or chewed food, which again goes to the mouth and again it gets chewed completely. Now, the question number ten. The function of the villages is to hold the food in the spaces between them. so that food can be absorbed by the walls of the intestine true or false children read the statement again the function of villages they are responsible to hold the food no they are responsible to increase the surface area so this is the function of alveolar villages in the small intestine and because of increasing the surface area in the small intestine most of the absorption of digested food can takes place so here you can write that the statement is false it's not true children i hope that you understood all the very short answer type question that you need to write in the book only not in notebook now come to the next exercise that is short answer type question short answer question you have to write the answer of such question in one or two sentence children okay so let's discuss and these all answer you will write in your notebook question number 1 how does a frog catch its prey children remember that in the first period of this chapter 
I have explained you about frog, amoeba, and the hydra. How they catch their food. So the frog is going to catch its prey or food with the help of its sticky tongue because they have the sticky tongue which is jointed from the front, not from the back. And with the help of such sticky tongue, the frog is able to catch its food or prey. Question number two. How does a spider digest its food? The spider, which is an insect. So the process of digestion is different in most of the insects and the spider also. As you all know that spider make its web. It weaves its web which is sticky. And this web is used to made by them just to capture the food, capture the other small organisms. So when in their sticky web, the other insect or their prey get stuck, they are going to release a kind of digestive juice from their mouth. And that digestive juice when falls on the body of that captured prey, their body start digesting and becomes liquid. And now when the body of that prey completely get digested by the digestive juice, the spider suck that liquid form of digested food. So here you must have to know that the spider and some other insects are there who take their food in liquid form. They cannot take their food in solid form like us. So first they release their digestive juice on the food. The food get digested and converted into liquid form and then they are going to suck it. Okay children? Understood? Now, very good. Come to the question number 3. Name the organs that make up the human elementary canals. Here you have to write the names of the parts of elementary canal one by one and write the names in the sequence. So the elementary canal starts from mouth. Yes. So the first part is mouth, second part esophagus, third stomach, fourth small intestine, fifth large intestine, sixth rectum and the seventh anus. So these are the seven parts of the elementary canal is there. So you have to write the name of these seven parts in a sequence. Now the question number four, what is the difference between milk teeth and permanent teeth? Students, we have explained about the milk teeth and permanent teeth and you all have also know it, you all have seen it. In the children, the first set of teeth that grows, it is a milk teeth because after some years that teeth falls are replaced and again the permanent teeth grows in the same place. So the milk teeth is the first set of teeth and the permanent teeth is the second set of teeth. The milk teeth are 20 in numbers that 10 in lower jaw and 10 in upper jaw whereas the permanent teeth is 32 in number that is 16 in lower jaw and 16 in upper jaw and when the milk teeth falls it gets replaced by permanent teeth. So these are some of the differences between milk teeth and permanent. Okay children I hope that you understood the differences. Now the question number 5. What is saliva and where is it produced? Children's saliva, it is a kind of digestive juice that secretes from salivary gland which is present in the mouth. The salivary gland is made up of three pairs. It is not a single pair of gland, it is three pair of glands and these three pair of glands are going to release a liquid or digestive juice which is known as saliva and when the food get ingested in the mouth the first saliva mix on them and start the process of digestion and mainly the digestion of starch so you have to write here that the saliva is a kind of digestive juice and where it is produced simply it is produced from salivary gland 
Now, come to the next question, question number 6. What is the function of taste buds? As you know that the taste buds are present to all surface of our tongue and these taste buds are responsible to provide us or give us the different kind of taste. As we know that while eating a food, we know that the taste of the food, either it is sweet, salty, sour, bitter. So these all informations are coming from the taste buds. So actually the taste buds are the small buds which are present on the surface of tongue which are responsible to provide us the kind of taste of food. Sweet, salty and uh, bitter like that. Now the question number 7. How long does food stay in the stomach? When we take the food it passes through the esophagus and goes to the stomach and then it stays for some time. So the question is that how long does it stay? So children it's not a fixed time to stay. It stays from few minutes to more time. That depends on the kind of food that we have taken. Some food get easily digested. They stay for very short period of time and some food stay for long period of time in the stomach. Okay? That depends on kind of food. Now, the question number 8. So the last question of your short answer question. And the question is, how does the process of acid in the stomach helps? As you know that a strong acid is present in our stomach. That is hydrochloric acid. Is it? And along with it, we have two more liquids that secretes from stomach that is mucus and digestive juice. So the question is that how does the presence of acid in the stomach help? How this acid is going to help us? So children, we have explained that this acid is going to provide the two help. The first help, it is responsible for killing the germs, bacteria which enter in the stomach along with food. So it kills them and the second one, it also helps in the digestion of protein. When this acid mixed in the food, so the protein part of the food can easily be digested with the action of digestive juice which secretes from its stomach. If this acid will not mix in the food, so that digestive juice of the stomach will not able to break the proteins. So that is why this acid also helps in the breakdown of protein with the help of digestive So children, these all are the very short answer questions of your book. And I hope that you understood these answers. So you can write the answers of these questions in your notebook. Now come to the next exercise that is long answer question. Long answer questions. Children, here you have to write the answer of the questions about in a paragraph. So come to one by one these questions. And the question number one: list and explain in one sentence each the various processes involved in nutrition in animals. Children, in the first period of this chapter, I have explained you that the steps involved in nutrition. How many steps are there? Yes, it's five. So in this answer, you have to explain them one by one, all the steps in short form. So the first step is ingestion. What is ingestion? Taking in the food in the mouth. Or taking in the food by any organism inside the body is known as ingestion. Second step is digestion. In this process what happens? The breakdown of food happens in simpler form. So whatever the complex nutrients present in the food, they need to break into simpler form. And this breakdown, this process is known as 
digestion. The third step is absorption. In the absorption process, what happens? When the food get breaks down in simpler form, they need to absorb by the body fluid for different activities. Then they can be used to produce energy or for body growth and all. So the absorption is required after the digestion of food. And the fourth step is assimilation. When the food get absorbed by the body fluid, they are ready to use to produce energy for body growth, to store the energy resources and all. So this process of utilization of the digested food or absorbed food in the body is known as assimilation. And the last fifth process is digestion. Yes. By this process what happens? Okay. By this process the undigested food in the form of solid get removed out, thrown out from the body. So this process is known as digestion. Okay children. So these are the five processes that we have to explain in this answer. Okay, now come to the question number 2. Explain through the diagrams ingestion of food in amoeba and in hydra. With the help of diagram, children, you have to explain. And I already have given the homework to draw the diagram of ingestion of food in amoeba and hydra. So, as you already have drawn these diagrams, so no need to draw again. Only you can explain here. Okay, so come to one by one. First is the amoeba. The ingestion of food occurs in the amoeba. As we have explained with the help of diagram. Remember? This is the body of amoeba which is irregular in shape. This is the nucleus. Cytoplasm. A body fluid, this is cell membrane. When the amoeba observe any food in its surrounding, suppose this one is any food particle. So the cell membrane or the surface of the body of amoeba is going to form some finger-like projection, and that projections are known as Pseudopodia, it's like this. The finger like projections are going to form, and slowly and slowly, this finger like projection captures overall food. This is food particle, this one is pseudopodia. So slowly this pseudopodia grows and finally it covers, it captures food. And now the food along with water is termed as food vacuoles. So this food vacuole forms inside the body. The body needs some digestive juice. The digestive juice digests this food. It is get absorbed and assimilated and at last the undigested waste food again thrown out from the body. So here you have to explain the process of ingestion in amoeba. And second one is hydra. So children remember that the structure of hydra it looks like a small plant. which have the tentacles. These are the tentacles. When any food particle 
absorbed by hydra in its surrounding suppose this one is the food so the tentacles of the hydra are going to move and capture that food and brings that food in the mouth this one is the mouth so they kept the food in the mouth and now the food get ingested and inside the body they get digested with the help of digestive juices so this one is the process of ingestion of food in amoeba and in hydra that you need to explain here with the help of diagram okay children now come to the next question question number 3 is name the four types of teeth in your mouth what are their function so very simple question here you have to name the kind of teeth and their function so come one by one the first kind of teeth incisors its function is biting and second kind of teeth canines they are helping in tearing up food third kind of teeth is premolar they are responsible for yes crushing the food items and the fourth molar which helpful in grinding the food so these are the four kind of teeth found in our mouth and they all have a different function now the question number 4 what is peristalsis explain with the help of a diagram till you remember that i already have given the homework to draw the diagram of peristaltic movement which is found in elementary canal like in esophagus small intestine large intestine and all so here we have to define the peristalsis peristalsis is a wave like movement that occurs because of contraction and relaxation of the muscles of our elementary canal and with the help of this movement what happens the food is able to pass forward move forward so such a web like movement is known as peristaltic movement and you can draw the diagram of this peristaltic movement as as you already have drawn it so no need to draw it again and if you have not drawn that time so you will draw here it this is the food pipe at esophagus so when the food enters here in the esophagus so the wall of esophagus get relaxed it is expanded and now the food moves downwards and as the food moves downwards the earlier part get contracted and again the food pushed so because of this continuous expansion and contraction of the muscles of the elementary canal the food is going to push forward and this movement is termed as peristaltic movement now the question number 5 what is the function of saliva bile juice and pancreatic juice so children here you have to give the answer separately one by one the function of saliva the function of bile juice and the function of pancreatic juice so come to the first the function of saliva remember children it is secreted in mouth from salivary gland and its function the first function it helps in breakdown of starch into sugar okay its second function it also help to make the food wet slippery so it easily can be ingested and move towards the esophagus okay now the function of bile juice as the bile juice get produced in liver and is stored in gall bladder so when the bile juice get added in the food they are responsible to break the fats into the small droplets so that they can easily digested or breaks down by the action of intestinal juice so the function of bile juice is to break the fats into small droplets for easier digestion of fats 
and the function of pancreatic juice is it is responsible for the yes complete breakdown of starch into simple sugar and the protein into amino acids so these are the functions played by the pancreatic juice it breaks the protein into amino acid and starch into sugar okay children so you have to write their function one by one now come to the question number 6 of law what happens to food in the stomach and small intestine again you have to give the separate answer what happens to the food in its stomach and what happens to the food in small intestine so simply when the food passes to the esophagus and comes to the stomach what happens here the three kind of liquids gets added there the first hydrochloric acid which help to kill the bacteria mucus which help to protect the wall of stomach and the digestive juice that is responsible for digestion of protein of the food so these all happens in the stomach part of our elementary canal with the food and the second what happens to food in small intestine so this small intestine complete digestion takes place of protein complete digestion of starch and complete digestion of fats because of different digestive juices and here in the small intestine also the absorption of food is going to take place so our small intestine is a very important part of our elementary canal because here the complete digestion of food takes place and the absorption of digested food also takes place okay now question number 7 explain how digested food is absorbed into the blood so our small intestine have the finger like the number of finger like projections and these finger like projections are known as villi's and the function of villi's we have explained as it is responsible to increase the surface area yes and because of increasing the surface area what happens the digested food can easily be absorbed by the blood capillaries which are present in Villi's walls of Villi's. So the small intestine Villi's are present, and they are responsible for absorption of digested food. And finally, the food goes to the blood and reaches to different body tissues. Okay, children. Now the question number eight, the last question of your long answers. That is, briefly explain the process of digestion in ruminants. children in our previous class i have explained about ruminants the cows fallows such animals are known as ruminants why because they have somewhat different kind of stomach which is four chamber so here you have to explain the process of digestion in ruminants so first the food chewed by the mouth that is partially chewed and goes to the first chamber of stomach again it goes to the second and comes back to the mouth and this partially digested food is termed as curd so curd comes back in the mouth and again it's get completely chewed and moves back to the third chamber of the stomach and then fourth chamber and passes to the small intestine so this one is the process of the digestion which is different as compared to humans in ruminants now the hot question at the last of the exercise some hot questions are given here you have to think it and then give the answer so the question number 1 which food do you think will take a longer time to get digested sugar or beans till the beans contains lot of protein so you have to write down you have to give the name that which digested first as the sugar which is the simple form of food it get digested first and it will take very less time bean have the proteins so it will take more time to get digested because partial digestion of protein will take place in small stomach then it takes place in small intestine then it can be absorbed so the protein will take longer time to get digested question number 2 is there digestion needs the help of two more systems in the body to provide energy from food which are these systems and how they 
तो टू मोर सिस्टम आर रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम एंड सर्कुलेटरी सिस्टम सर्कुलेटरी सिस्टम इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल टू कैरी द डाइजेस्टेड फूड विद द ब्लड टू ऑल द बॉडी पार्ट एंड रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम हेल्प टू प्रोड्यूस एनर्जी विद दैट डाइजेस्टेड फूड ओके चिल्ड्रेन एंड द लास्ट क्वेश्चन इज इफ यू ईट फूड बाई हैंगिंग अपसाइड डाउन Do you think it will still go through the elementary canal? Yes or no? So children, yes. Your answer will be yes. The reason is that because the movement of the food is going to occur because of peristalsis movement, and always by the peristalsis movement, the food pushes to forward, not to backward. Okay. So children, I hope that you understood all the answers of the question that you need to write in your notebook. Okay. Thank you, and have a nice day.